E3 has come and gone, and now that it has, it's time to talk about everything we know about Halo Wars 2, which is more than you might think, especially if you don't follow the news and fan discoveries as I try to do. So let's see what Microsoft revealed this week and speculate on what it could mean for the game's story and the future of Halo. Halo Wars 2 takes place 28 years after the events of Halo Wars, which puts it in the year 2559. After almost 30 years in cryo, the crew of the Spirit of Fire find themselves over the Ark, Installation 00, which fans of course remember from Halo 3. How they got there is unknown, but soon after landing they encounter a faction known as the Banished. The Banished are a group of former Covenant that rebelled even before the Great Schism and are led by the Brew Chieftain Atriox. Since the fall of the Covenant, the Banished have managed to amass a lot of power and technology, making them a force to be reckoned with. From gameplay, the Banished are made up of Gerald Hanai, Songheili, Megalogolo, Ungoy, and quite interestingly, Huragok, though there could potentially be more. Also of note, Halo Wars will be the first game to feature both versions of the Ungoy. The main grunt units use the Bungie-era grunt design, while suicide grunts use the 343-era design. The Jiral Hanai units include basic infantry, jump pack brutes, and a new hero unit known as Brute Warlords. The banished vehicles, familiar and old, are, for lack of a better word, brutish. So far we've seen a brute spirit, a brute wraith, brute ghosts, a new model of chopper, a brute locust, the new blisterback anti-air unit, a support unit known as a shroud, the marauders, and reavers. On the UNSC side, we have a number of returning units, including basic marines and ODSTs, and new units like the snipers. Vehicles are a similar mix of new and old, with the UNSC wielding vultures, hornets, cyclopses, wolverines, warthogs, scorpions, grizzlies, the jackrabbit scouting units, the nightingale support VTOL, and the Kodiak. Grizzlies look pretty much the same, but now have a missile barrage. Based on gameplay from the first level of the game, it seems this ability is something the Spirit's crew, likely with the help or under the supervision of Anders, added to the tanks. I think it's time we tested out the Grizzly's toy, don't you? The Nightingale may be the AV-49 VTOL mentioned in last week's cannon fodder, but that remains to be seen. The Kodiak is an eight-wheeled Sage vehicle, which can lock itself down like the Cobra. Of note is the redesign to the Cyclops, which now features digitigrade legs rather than plantigrade like in Halo Wars 1, along with other modifications. Whether this is a retcon or an upgrade of some kind remains to be seen. While we're on it, with all the newer changed units and the new look of the bases, one cannot help but speculate as to the nature of these changes. Are they retcons, or are they the result of events that will transpire during the game? As I mentioned in my last video on Halo Wars 2, we know that the UNSC at least had a presence on the Ark if they aren't still present when the Spirit of Fire shows up, which could potentially serve as a way for the Spirit to upgrade some of her technologies, maybe even receive repairs. As one commenter pointed out in at least one scene in the CGI trailer, the Spirit doesn't appear to be sporting the damage it received after hitting that Covenant Destroyer in Halo Wars 1. So, might it have hit up a UNSC station of some kind? We'll see. Getting back to the story, so far we've confirmed that both Captain James Cutter and Professor Alan Anders are returning. Like Cutter, Anders has received a bit of a makeover, which has been about as well received as Cutter's. As I noted, the spirit appears over the arc through means unknown, but there's no way in hell it just drifted there. In 30 years, the furthest they could make it is 30 light years, and there's no way they were going anywhere near the speed of light at the end of Halo Wars. So what happened? I've had a few discussions on this, and there were two ideas that stood out. The first is that the spirit drifted close enough to a planet or installation with a portal and, by luck or some other means, were portaled to the Ark. The other interesting idea I saw proposed was that the Ark moved itself. The thing is already capable of opening slipspace portals to distribute the Halo Rings, so why not the ability to move itself? If the Halo Rings can move themselves through slipspace, why not the Ark? Now yes, that is a massive object and would, in the words of a mysterious forerunner, require an impossible act of reconciliation, but it could be possible. Of course, that would beg the question, why was it moved, and who moved it? One possibility is the Kraden, wanting to move it closer to the galaxy or for some other reason. Another possibility could be that the native human forces stationed there moved it, perhaps as a result of the events of Halo 5. The game is set in 2559, at least a few months after Halo 5 ended, so perhaps what remains of the UNSC got in contact with the forces on the Ark and had them move the installation to keep it out of created hands. We'll have to wait and see. Perhaps just as mysterious as the Spirit of Fire's arrival at the Ark is the Banished's presence. What could they be doing at the Ark? The first idea that pops into mind is that maybe they want to capture some Forerunner tech and or some Covenant tech that remains from the Human Covenant War. Maybe they want the Ark itself, or some secret that it contains. How awesome would it be if they were there to recover mendicant bias? Tons of possibilities, but no facts as of yet. 
Finally, while we are talking about the Ark, a very interesting discovery was made during an IGN interview. In this footage, if you look carefully, you can see what looks to be a halo ring in the Ark's foundry. This was again seen in the background of several Xbox Daily interviews. Here we can clearly see the Ark, the foundry world, and a halo ring. So we have to ask, which ring is this? Two possibilities come to mind. The first is an Installation 04C. The other would be Installation 03 Gamma Halo. The last we saw of Gamma Halo, 859 Static Rillian said he was going to take it somewhere to be repaired. As we currently don't know of any other installations designed to repair Halo rings, though I wouldn't be surprised if some exist, the Ark is the most logical location to assume it ended up. And hell, if Gamma Halo ended up there, so would Static Rillian. And maybe if the idea that the Ark was moved is true, he was the one to move it. Once again, tons of possibilities, no facts. Moving on, let's discuss the Banished and Atriox. As I noted earlier and in my breakdown video, the Banished are a group that rebelled against the Covenant prior to the Great Schism and are made up of Brutes, Elites, Hunters, Grunts, and Engineers. 343 have stated that the Banished were referenced in prior Halo media, and in my previous video I made a connection to this scene from Halo Wars 1. The war with the humans will require a great deal many more machines than we can currently muster. I will take what we have. And leave us defenseless? No. While I still believe it is likely that the line will be retconned to refer to the Banished, another theory has arisen that I think may be a more direct early reference to the Banished. In the Kilo 5 trilogy, we learn of Venezia, a former UEG colony that declared its independence during the Covenant War in 2543. In the years to follow, it would act as a haven for deserters from both the UNSC and Covenant, and would become a sanctuary for all sorts of illegal activity after the war. So, could this be the reference to the Banished 343 was referring to? It seems likely enough. I doubt Halo Wars 2 was planned that far in advance, but I think it's likely enough that 343 might have had an idea that would evolve into the Banished and planted subtle seeds early on. Anyway, following the fall of the Covenant, the Banished would scavenge a lot of Covenant technology for their own use while giving it a brute twist as we've seen. The Banished are of course led by Atriox, a new character specifically created for Halo Wars 2. His armor is at least partially made up of scavenged armor pieces, but the most notable feature is his right arm. Revealed in a concept sheet, the arm piece is a power gauntlet that mechanically enhances his strength. He wields a weapon that many fans have come to dub the Plasma Mace, created from parts of a gravity hammer. Needless to say, I can't wait to learn more about this mysterious brute and see him in action. The final subject to discuss today isn't really a what we know subject, but it's definitely relevant to the topic of Halo Wars 2. That is, the last few pages of Halo Escalation Issue 6, showing the Spirit of Fire drifting near an unknown planet with a flood infection form on board. The question is, when does this take place in relation to Halo Wars 2? The answer that likely comes to mind for most is that it takes place after Halo Wars 2, but a quote from Brian Reed made me think otherwise. And there she is, the Spirit of Fire. The when of this shot is not present day, but I won't be saying any more than that here. It is revealed, however, in an upcoming anthology project. That's also where the story of this flood critter is resolved. I've read the script. It's exciting. So, if we have a story coming out later this year, it seems kinda weird that it would take place after Halo Wars 2, as that could potentially spoil the events of that game, at least to some degree. Conversely, given what's happening in the comic, it seems odd that it would take place any time except after Halo Wars 2. My own theory is that the scene is set prior to Halo Wars 2, and may play a part in explaining how the spirit gets to the Ark. But, as I keep saying, plenty to speculate about, but no facts yet. And so, that's currently everything we know about Halo Wars 2, plus a lot of extra speculation. I hope you all enjoyed watching this. I'm off to play some Halo Wars 2 beta, so until next time, this has been Halo Canon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.